Well, good afternoon, everyone, and what an exciting day this is, and I thank you, uh, Minister Surma, for that introduction. On behalf of Minister Mel Rooney, Minister Surma, Associate Minister Stan Cho, PA Non, PA Martin, I want to welcome Minister El Gabra and Mayor Tory and Mayor Crombie and thank them for joining us today. My friends, our government is building Ontario. We're building roads, bridges and highways. We're expanding subways and public transit and we're constructing more homes, all for a growing province. And today is another landmark day as we break ground on a new tunnel for the Eglinton West Crosstown extension. The extension is a seven-stop subway line that will connect communities and businesses across Toronto, Etobicoke and Mississauga. Communities that have been massively underserved by their transit options. Today, we take a big step forward in changing that. Despite the rapid growth in population that has been happening in the GTA, previous governments refused to make the necessary investments to ensure our transit system kept pace. For years, they talked and debated, they formed committees, and they asked for endless studies. After all that, they failed to deliver as Ontarians continued to wait. But since our government took office, we have been on a mission to build Ontario, to cut through red tape and finally get the shovels in the ground on the new infrastructure that a growing province so desperately needs. Today's groundbreaking is just one more proof that we're getting it done when others wouldn't and didn't. Together with our federal and municipal partners, we're saying to the commuters in the GTA that you've waited long enough for transit options. And this is, this is absolutely essential, folks, as I've said before, we couldn't have done this without the collaboration of the municipalities, Mayor Tory, Mayor Crombie, and the federal government. Uh, when we work together, things happen. This is a world-class city. It needs and deserves world-class public transit. The Eglinton Crosstown West Extension is one of four priority subway projects our government is delivering for the people of the GTA, including the Young North Extension, the Scarborough Subway, and the all-new Ontario Line. These subways are part of our government's 30-year plan for building transit right across the GTA. Backed by a historic $28.5 billion investment in transit infrastructure. The largest, the largest transit investment in Canadian history. Our plan also includes two badly needed new highways. Highway 413 for Brampton, Mississauga and Vaughan and the Bradford Bypass. These highways will help to ease crippling gridlock that has plagued the GTA for far too long. We're also expanding GO service, spanning all corners of the region and making good on our promise of two-way, all-day service. Our government understands that building more transit also means more jobs for our workers. The Eglinton Crosstown West Extension alone will support as many as 4,600 jobs annually during its construction. The fact is, the GTA cannot afford to go back to the endless debating and stalling that kept previous governments from delivering what Ontarians needed. You just need to listen to the people and deliver what they're asking for. And those are the modern transit options that makes their lives easier. You just need the will to get it done. In four short years, our provincial government has come so far together. Let's keep building, let's keep delivering the fast and reliable transit that the people of Ontario deserve. And let's get commuters home to their families that much faster. Friends, let's get it done. Thank you and God bless the people of Ontario. Now, I'll hand it over to our federal counterpart, Minister El Gabra. Thank you so much, Premier. Um, it's great to be with you here, uh, along with uh, my colleagues uh, from uh, the Ontario Caucus, Liberal Caucus, uh, MP, where are they? Yvonne, right there, Yvonne Baker and Equinder Gahir. I'm here on behalf of Minister LeBlanc, Dominic LeBlanc. He would have liked to be with us here today, uh, but you're stuck with me, Premier. Uh, and, and, and I'm also grateful to be here with Minister Maruni, Minister Cho, Minister Surma, and other uh, provincial colleagues. My mayor, Mayor Crombie, Mayor Tory, um, 
Metrolinx and all of the workers here who are helping make this project a, a reality. Uh, Premier, the economy is booming. Our economy is doing well. We just recorded the lowest unemployment record in Canada's history. And what our budget last week announced is our plan to continue to expand this economy, to continue to support jobs, to continue to support Canadians and making life more affordable for them. And these projects help us expand our economy, help provide more options for Canadians, help provide more options for businesses. So it is a pleasure to continue to support such amazing, incredible, uh, meaningful projects for the people of Toronto, for the people of Mississauga, for the people of Ontario, and for the people of Canada. Uh, the federal government is contributing almost $1.9 billion to this project alone, which is part of $10.4 billion of investment for projects in the Toronto area, part of $18 billion of infrastructure for Ontario. We are committed to a historic level of building Ontario building Canada and and uh, as you said premier when all levels of government work together we can deliver for Canadians um, as I mentioned to you last time premier we are also at the federal level have are funding a study to connect the Eglinton crosstown to Pearson Airport which will be incredibly important for businesses for workers for travelers so I'm looking forward to completing that study and seeing the reality of connecting the airport to Eglinton Crosstown become um, also a day where you and I can come and announce its, its uh, construction, uh, Premier. And our budget doubled down on our investment of the high frequency rail that connects Quebec to Toronto throughout different communities that connect the two great provinces of ours. So this is um, part and parcel of our overall agenda for building the Canadian economy, providing options and combating climate change. It's a pleasure to be with all of you here today. Thank you uh, to the workers, uh, to, to Canadians, to all of you for being patient over the last two years. We're turning the corner from COVID and it's great to be able to do these events in person. Now it's my pleasure to hand over the mic to uh, Mayor John Tory. Thanks everyone. Well, Premier and uh, Ministers and uh, other uh, elected representatives, including uh, the Mayor of Mississauga, Bonnie Crombie, I want to say thank you today uh, to Minister Al Gabra and thank you to the Premier, to their respective governments for uh, helping put together the partnership that is making this happen. You know, people hear a lot of announcements, as the Premier said, they hear a lot about studies and studies and work on design and things like that are necessary. It's why it takes so long to do these projects. But there's nothing like a groundbreaking where we actually saw uh, the Premier uh, push a button and uh, turn on the tunnel boring machine so construction is actually underway. And both of these governments continue to be very strong partners with the City of Toronto, and I'm sure I can say with the City of Mississauga as well. Uh, and it's going to be very important to our post-pandemic recovery uh, as a city. It's great to be here today as we actually start the tunneling for the Eglinton West. And when you see all three governments working together, standing up here together, you know that we all have a keen interest in getting this done. We know that this transit extension will be good for families. It'll be good for jobs. It'll be good for, the invest for investment. It'll be good for tourism. It'll be good for the environment because it'll get cars off the road. So I want to thank both the federal and provincial governments for standing alongside the city and for investing in Toronto transit and in transit across the region. We are getting on with getting this transit built here in Etobicoke, in Scarborough, in the downtown at East York, and in North York. I think you would be hard pressed to find another time in the entire history of the City of Toronto or this region where so much transit construction was underway at one time. After decades of debate and delay, we have broken the transit gridlock together and we're going to get the transit built together. We're able to do that because we, the city government and the provincial government and the federal government are all working together to get this done. I've always believed that all governments have to work together to get results for the very same people that we all serve. We all serve the same people and they all want us to get things done and that is how you get things done by working together. 
From day one, for me as mayor, I've been determined to work with the province and with the government of Canada to make progress on the transit we must see built. We must see shovels in the ground, in this case boring machines, to actually get the work underway. And now we just have to make sure that this progress continues. And that's why I'm focused every day in my job as mayor in protecting the gains that we're making, including these partnerships we put together to actually fund and get, get on with these transit projects and continue to move forward together. More than $28 billion in transit projects are underway in Toronto right now. This is a major step forward for our city, but we have to see these projects through and make sure that nothing derails this progress for our city and for this region. And we know that transit, pro transit construction is never easy. We know that people have to be patient and understanding, as I know they will be, in getting this done, but get done, it must. I know Metrolinx is committed to helping communities get through the construction and helping them get to the day when these lines are up and running and making life better for residents and for businesses. And we'll be working with them to make sure that they help residents and businesses get through what is often a very challenging construction phase. But make, make no mistake, transit expansion is good news for Toronto, it's good news for the GTA, it's good news for the province, and it's good news for the entire country given the degree to which the national economy and its health will, de will be determined by the health of the economy right here. This once-in-a-lifetime transit expansion and upgrading underway right now means jobs, construction jobs, in this workplace. Workplaces of the future are going to be constructed around this transit, and it means faster and more reliable transit connections to make lives easier for the people who live here now and who will live here going forward. And that, in turn, will mean less vehicles on the roads, which will help us a lot in our very important uh, climate change goals. All of this will help to make sure that Toronto, Canada's economic engine, is firing on all cylinders. This project extends the Eglinton Crosstown kilometres further west and will accommodate 37,000 rides each day on the western extension alone. Future riders will benefit from an LRT route right across our city. Let's remember the opening of the original 19-kilometre Eglinton Crosstown. I think it is still the largest transit project in North America that is presently under construction. The opening of that line is just a few months away, and those riders will be able to travel from Kennedy Station in Scarborough to Mississauga. I will continue to fight hard for the Eglinton East LRT, and which runs uh, through the U of T Scarborough campus to Malvern. The city has already committed itself a billion dollars to this project. People making connections will also benefit from quick and easy transfers to the TTC, to My Way, the Mississauga Transit System, to GO, and to the UP Express, as well as a potential future link to the Pearson International Airport. Because transportation to and around the airport is also crucially important for tourism, for the economy, and for the general well-being of this region. And I want to thank Omar al Gabra, the Minister, and the Government of Canada for funding the studies that will move that project forward too. We are creating together new opportunities and new options for people so they can rely less on their car and more on public transit options, which will help us to become a cleaner and greener city. This is all good news for our city and for our province and for our country. So I wish Rexy and Rennie, the boring machines, uh, in case you didn't know they had been so named, and I wish their crews, all the construction workers who will work on this project, the very best as they proceed forward. It is important for Toronto, it is important for Ontario, and it is important for Canada that we come back strong from the pandemic and all the years of difficulty and sacrifice that people have faced. I am confident we can do it if we continue to work together, if we continue to build on the strengths that we have, and we continue to move forward with future successes. This project is an important step in that direction. Thank you. We'll now take questions from media. If you have a question, please join the line behind me at the microphone. It'll be one question and one follow-up per reporter, one at a time. Hi, Premier. Brittany Hi. Rosen with Global News. Hi. Um, can you give us a, a tangible timeline for this project? How many years or how many months will, you know, commuters have to wait until this is up and running and they can actually start, you know, using this? Yeah, great, great question. I'm going to call the Commander-in-Chief of Metrolinx up and I, I have to tell you with Phil Verster, incredible job. But, um, it, you know, there's one thing being the leader, but it's his whole team. That, that's making this happen. He's the first to say when we have a meeting, he's so grateful for the frontline women and men that are working here on all the projects. So I want to give them a shout out as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. So 
one of the lessons we've learned through all of our projects and delivery is that projects are better if they are separated out in parts, so that's why we're building the tunneling first. We can only give you a completion date for the end of the project as we, when, as and when we buy the late, the later stages of the construction. So we've got two, two other um, projects now out for bidding. There's a, a tunnel um, length from Jane through to uh, Mount Dennis, an elevated guideway from Scarlet to, to Jane. And I can't tell you when that's going to be completed because that'll go to market soon. And then we build the stations thereafter. At this stage, what we can give you a sense of is sort of back end of 23, early part of 24, we expect the tunneling segment to be completed. But then we stack the projects, the contracts thereafter, and then that gets us to a completion date. Thanks. Follow up? Uh, this is also for the Premier. Um, uh, will these projects that you're you know, working on be impacted if there were to be a, a change in government uh, for this upcoming provincial election? Well, I'm hoping that's not going to happen uh, because they had their turn for 15 years and it never it didn't move a grain of salt. Uh, now, with the cooperation of the federal government, the municipal government, uh, we're able to get things going. It's really, really outstanding. Uh, if you really think of it, in three years, uh, we, we had a talk about it, all three levels of government. We, we all went in and in three years, we're, we have a, a tunneling machine boring right now. Uh, so it's been financed. Uh, it's been planned properly, and and we're getting the job done. So uh, there's a, there's a stark difference between ourselves and what happened for the last 15 years. Premier, thanks, uh, Steve Ryan from CP24. Thanks, uh, sir, how committed is your government to uh, public transit? I know it's something your, your government talks about quite often. How committed are you to that? Well, considering this is the largest project in in North America, uh, largest project in the history of Canada. Uh, we're, we're committed. Uh, we're committed to working as partners uh, with the federal and municipal governments. And I, I can't say enough. I know I keep repairing, uh, repeating it, but this job wouldn't have been able to move forward without uh, the, the cooperation of the municipalities and the federal government. And it goes to show you on any project that we do, when you have collaboration between the three levels of government, the community and the private sector, uh, we're unstoppable around the world. And we just have the greatest people uh, working on these projects, and we're very grateful for that. Thank you for that. And I have, I have a, a, a COVID question, if, yes. if you indulge me. Sure. Um, we heard from your top doctor today during a press conference suggesting that it's a strong recommendation that people wear masks when they can. Sure. Is there some concern, sir, that there's going to be confusion amongst people in the province when it comes to wearing a mask or not wearing a mask? What do you, what do you yeah, say to that? Thank, thanks for that question, uh, Steve. The, I, I think it really comes down to common sense. We've been through this for two years. When you walk into a real crowded room, throw the mask on. Uh, no one's going to force you, but I, I would recommend it. Just put the mask on. But, you know, we're, we, we, we're well equipped now. We've learned so much over the last two years. We've built up the capacity uh, with 3,100 uh, additional beds. We've hired 8,600 health care workers. We have the antiviral uh, pills online. And, and thank you for the federal government for that as, as well. Um, you know, we're one of the most vaccinated regions in the world, uh, and then there's uh, immunity too. So, you know, I, I stress to everyone, be cautious, be cautious. Fami Botros, Oxygen Media. Uh, thank you very much for this great project, Premier, and uh, we would like to ask about the timeline of this project when it will be finished. Thank you. Well, th thank you so much. I, I, I think, Phil, you mentioned it. You want to just say a few comments? So thank you for the question. The project will really be completed by the completion of the station's uh, scope. Uh, and the station scope follow after the three scopes we have in market now, three different projects that gets completed first, and then the fourth part is the station scope. We don't declare the date till the market has bid us a price, and we understand what's the best schedule and the best cost structure for the, uh, for the last project. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Well, that's it. That's all the questions, okay. thank you. Anyways, again, I just want to thank everyone that's been involved. You're all absolutely, uh, absolute champions. Once again, thank you to the mayors, thank you to the federal government and the minister, and you've done an incredible, incredible job. I, I look forward, I know Minister Mulroney, uh, Minister Algabra, you were saying you're talking to the, the airport, and I think that's important. I know the mayor will. I know the minister has for the last uh, year and a bit. You've been 
communicating a plan. So this is just the beginning for transit in Toronto and the uh, GTA. So thank you everyone, very much appreciated.